record. Let me share my screen as well. I also have to drop, but it looks like we have a very, uh, maybe 15 minutes, but it looks like we have a very short uh, agenda anyway, so it's probably not a, a problem. All right, so we've got two items today. Um, we're going to be going over red sidecar future and then 1.21 branch. If anyone else has things to discuss, uh, add to the agenda so we can make sure to uh, accommodate the timing there. Um, nothing else. I'll, I'll just hop on to the first one. Um, so that's some background for those who aren't familiar. In Kubernetes 1.29, they finally launched the new native sidecar support to beta. Um, what this means is that most of these two problems around lifecycle management, uh, the sidecar solved. So the sidecar starts up first, exits last. Um, that's that's pretty much it. I guess not all the problems. It doesn't allow the dynamic up, upgrade. That would be nice, but it solves a lot of them. Um, the tricky thing about this feature is that it requires support on the node and the API server. So in past um, features like endpoint slice, for example, we just set up a check for the API server version. We said if it's greater than this version, use endpoint slices. If not, use the endpoints. Uh, we can't actually do that here because it also relies on the node. So the question here is what we want to do about it. I think there's also another factor that currently it's beta. We probably don't want to automatically turn on a setting that then relies on a beta Kubernetes feature at this point. This is something we've done in the past in the project, but today E2 actually runs entirely on V1 APIs in Kubernetes, uh, which seems like a nice property to uh, preserve. So there's a few options. I think one is that we can just um, have users set it and say like you're responsible for making sure that you don't, your nodes are on newer versions and push that problem to them. We could maybe even add, um, well, I guess another option would be to add a check, but do it at install time. So it's just part of the user pedal. Um, when it help home users, they'd still have to do the manual check, but still covers a good amount of users. And uh, the, the third option, which is the most powerful, but there's the most complex, is during the injection, we can read all the nodes and make sure that all of them are more than 1.29. <clears throat> you kind of have to look at all of them, not just a specific one, because you don't actually know what node the pod is going to be assigned to. Um, I mean, there's some details here of like some semantics around that, but I think if for the most part, it's best to just say all nodes plus me 129, and that's, I think, a fair trade off for the user. Uh, there's something I was thinking that I didn't have a chance to update the issue because I thought of it right as the meeting started that we might actually want kind of two modes for this automated support if we do it, which would be like automatically uh, enable for beta or automatically enable for stable which would be the same check, just checking for either 1.29 or 1. whatever version that makes stable. That way, in the future, when we make it default, we can say, like the default would be automatically enable if the user has stable support for this feature, so that we don't enable the beta feature automatically. Uh, but we could still add like an auto beta mode in case someone wants to uh, opt into the beta early, but do it in a safe manner so that they don't have to worry about someone making like an old node pool or something and then causing an outage. Uh, that was a lot of talking. Um, I just want to get a feel for what people think uh, here. It's not a huge rush, I think, because for people right now can just opt in explicitly. They just have to be careful. Uh, but it would be nice. Like I think this will be a blocker by the time we want to make this uh, on my default, which could be. I don't know, six to nine months, depending on how long Kubernetes takes to make it stable, probably. So. I mean, I think number one is um, personally not great. Um, so it's either two or the manual opt in, I think, but I don't know what everyone else thinks. Yeah, I, I kind of agree, but I have this huge bias that I. I'm in charge of a managed Easter offering where we have, to, we have to make this decision for the users. So yeah. um, I'm not sure how much that's skewing my my opinion to add on this complexity. The only opinion I have is that I think it probably is much simpler to make this an install, install time check and minimize the amount of intelligent runtime enabling we do. Um, because I feel like in most cases, people are going to know what they're doing. Um, and if we do an install time check, that should be good enough. 
they're probably not going to upgrade their Kubernetes cluster and do all these things without also reinstalling Istio in some way. And that's the only opinion I have about it other than that. How much do the features improve the experience? Um, it's a good question. It's hard to hard to answer. Uh, definitely uh, not a non-zero amount. Like it is the most thumbs up issue on Istio. Uh, I think it's probably actually one and two for like my application started or the sidecar started too late or it shut down too early, and it completely fixes those two issues. Um, I don't know. It's it's not like the biggest feature in the world that's going to you know, make or break someone's these two experience most likely, but I think it's a huge uh, quality of life improvement. I was just thinking in terms of like the the install time parameter makes a lot of sense to me. It puts the user in control of what's happening there. At the same time, if it's a particularly big fix, that means that if you just naively install Istio, say a demo environment, very quickly, uh, sidecar support trying to understand how big of a deal that would be it sounds like it's tolerable yeah i mean it is also nice like those are the exact kind of people that you want this feature to have as well because it's like in my mind one of the very straight options is i installed these two my application doesn't work and that's like the onboarding flow actually um so it's kind of nice like what we could do and if we really didn't want to do any of this you could say okay we need to we'll just add like four to the version that we're checking because you can't have a four version SKU, at least in open source Kubernetes between the API server and the node. But then that adds like 15 months until it can enable this. So if we say like nine months for it to go GA plus 15 months, we're talking like two years to ship this feature out by default, um, which is pretty substantially long. <clears throat> I guess, so I mean, I was, when I initially opened this, I was really thinking about like letting users opt in now um and it was like yeah it's not maybe use worth it but if we're talking about enabling by default i feel like we almost have to have this um so i'm i am leaning towards towards having it as well john when you say you're leaning towards having it you mean the detection the detection yeah option two so if it detects a 1.29, does it also detect whether the user have this, I guess the admin or the cluster has this function enabled at the yeah, beta the, level? Yeah, the, the very annoying thing about Kubernetes is there's actually no API to query for a feature flag state. So there's no way that you can just check is native sidecars enabled. Um, you can check the version and in, the vast majority of Kubernetes distributions, if it's beta, then it's on by default. Um, if they're on different platforms, uh, they could explicitly turn this off. The other thing though, is that I think when we, for turning it on by default, like I think the default, if we just do this day would be off still, and users can just opt into like on, but safe detection. So they don't accidentally, there's some guardrails. I don't think we should turn it on by default until it's GA. And once it's GA, I don't think it can be turned off. So there's no need to actually check um, if the feature is enabled or not, because there's no way to turn off the stable features like this in Kubernetes. OK, I think I feel more comfortable if it's stable. So basically, what everybody says, uh, it's it just feels more comfortable for user to opt in into this. Until it's stable, though, right? Uh, yes. We could uh, just have like the demo profile use the automated mode or, or the detection mode so that if you're sort of naively just installing and kicking the tires 
you get the best possible experience, but then you need to make some decisions about when you go to production. I, we have another profile that's called preview. Um, I'm a bit worried about demo being used for like unstable features and not just like, here's the kitchen sink of features. We could maybe, um, but it, preview is, is also is meant to for that explicitly like here's all the stuff that's unstable but it's like the next gen and you know you can adopt it or if you want i don't think people really use that profile though so it's kind of a, <laughs> i think it's probably a, a you know not really useful um yeah but we also don't advertise it so All right, um, I think we're running out of steam on this one. If you have comments, uh, I don't think anything's going to like go open up here or anything for this in the coming days. So feel free to uh, put it on the issue or whatnot, um, and we can uh, discuss more. Um, looks like one dot twenty one is up. All right, you're here. Yep. Yes, yeah, so it's just an announcement. Twenty second January is the branch cut for one twenty one branch. Uh, if you have any PRs, feel free to merge it and feel free to ping on Slack if you have something urgent on 21 release. And work is being tracked in the GitHub issues there. I have tagged it. Yeah, the only PR I want to mention is uh, uh, John and everybody else. You guys being review uh, the import redirection for Ambient for over a month now. Ideally, it would be really nice to get into one to uh, one dot twenty one, so people can actually try ambient on different platform, other than kind. So I don't know uh, if you guys have any outlook. Uh, would that be possible making to one twenty one soon? Um, I have been meaning to go and, well, I, so I first looked at the Easter Easter one from Ben, uh, like a long time ago and left a bunch of comments and then haven't looked at it since I've been looking at the Z tunnel one. I'm, I'm pretty much ready to approve. I've just been slammed on stuff outside of yeah, all sorts of contractor and issues with my house. <laughs> uh, so I've been meaning to go pretty much approve it. Um, but I, I just haven't, haven't done that yet. So I think, yes, that will happen. Uh, keep in mind too, like even if we're after, well, it's technically not my decision, but if we're after the twenty second by a few days, like I would personally not be against, um, you know, still including it in one dot twenty one. Um, although we shouldn't have slipped more than you know a few days. Yeah, because it's uh, merging. It's going to be harder to, you know, have additional work on Yuva, and then yeah, well, I would really appreciate if you can approve it on, on the Z tunnel side, and then in parallel working. Uh, um, if you have additional feedback for Ben, because uh, as you know, the solo team has been very very diligent to resolving any review comments from you and the yeah. community. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost certain. Uh, the Z tunnel one will be merged um, by the 22nd. The, the Easter one, I just haven't looked at it for a while, so I don't want to make any, any guarantees. And that one was a bit more invasive uh, because the initial, the Z tunnel one was just adding stuff, but the, the Easter one is replacing, um, which is probably fine, I think. Um, it just is a different dynamic on re review, right? Okay, yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah, so I uh, appreciate your focus on this. Um, I think speaking of that, there's another one that's the uh, compatibility versions thing. I just sent the link on the chat here. I would love a review slash approval there um, so we can get that at 1.21 um, because there's a few other features that we are depending on um, this PR merging. Um, and I think it will be good for like the release blog of like, here's this cool thing we're doing. Uh, it has a nice story that, um, that I'm planning to, to write up. So. Yeah, it's a networking approver, I think. So, did you just who do you, who do you need approval? Uh, someone with networking. There? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know who on here is networking. I think you are, Lynn. You might be the only one here. Okay, I will take a look. It's not pilot, right? Because I don't have privilege to. Approve no, I don't even know why it needs okay. networking. It's 
it's not even like in networking code. Maybe I changed like one file or something that happens to. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will take to, to do this week. Make sure get to it before the branch card. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's all from me. That's all on the agenda. Anything else we should chat or we can uh, end early and meet back up at the ambient meeting, which, by the way, I won't be able to attend, unfortunately. So um, but I'll follow up on any discussions. All right. Good luck with your house. Thanks. Thanks. Um, all right. See everyone in an hour or next week or whenever. Bye. Yeah, thanks, everyone.